What's going on guys? Asian Guy here bringing you my very first guide of 2021 and it's going to be Albedo. Happy New Year's first of all. Hopefully 2021 is going to be a lot better than 2020 for the majority of people. And yes, Albedo, he is a very, very good character. I will have a super in-depth guide which is probably going to span 40 minutes to 60 minutes long in the future. But that's going to be in maybe mid-January or late January because I need to still get more weapons and leveling up talent, etc, etc does take some time. So... Artifacts are going to be covered in this video. The basic weapons, the ones that I personally think are great, Harbinger of Dawn, you've got the Black Sword, you've got the Aquila Favonia, and you've also got the free-to-play weapon, the Festering Desire, which I personally think is the best choice that you can have between that and Harbinger of Dawn. I'll talk about that in a moment, and then I'll talk about his talent levels or what his talents actually do and which way you want to build for Albedo. Now, the long story short is, guys, if you want to make the most of Albedo, you are going to have to level him up. I know there is a narrative out there that you shouldn't level up characters past level 60, but for Albedo, he scales off defense, and to get the most defense stat that you can, you really do need to be leveling up your characters past level 60 to 70 or 80 and even 90 if you can. As you can see, my Albedo is at level 80. Now, he does not have the best defense artifacts in the world, but he definitely is not sacking when it comes to the defense artifacts. Now, I want to make it very clear that this is going to be Constellation Zero and the talents are all at 666 or rather 366 because I don't really use them for his normal attack. But this ability here, Abiogenesis Solar Isotoma, Oh my god, this ability is pretty dang awesome. It's very easy accessible, and I think it's definitely one of those that is a very smooth feeling, and it feels very clean when you do play around with it. So the first thing that we should talk about are definitely going to be the weapons. First of all, Festering Desire. I've leveled this weapon up to level 90, and whether you own Albedo or not, guys, and for some reason you're still watching this video without owning Albedo, please do level up this weapon. Festering Desire is one of the best weapons in the game. It currently has a 1.5 times boost to leveling up, so you are going to save a lot of resources doing that, so please do take it to level 90. You can refine it to rank 5, as you can see I've got there, completely free. No resin cost at all as well. This is such a good gift for the new year or for Christmas from MiHoYo. And I gotta say, it is a fantastic weapon, not just for Albedo, but for loads of other characters. And this is why I think Festering Desire is the better weapon over Harbinger of Dawn. Now, Harbinger of Dawn is a three-star weapon that is very, very easily refined. I personally don't have it refined because I never, saw, never thought that I would need a use for it. But Harbinger of Dawn, and if there are any sort of weapons similar to this in other categories, are all good for characters that don't need any attack scaling. Now, it's not like Albedo doesn't need attack scaling. It's nice to have attack on Albedo because the ultimate and the first part of his elemental skill actually does scale off attack or geo damage, and you do still kind of want to have that. But base attack, three-star weapons, I've said in the past, are never worth keeping because the base attack is not that great. Now, this is only true for characters who don't need that much attack. In Albedo's case, he wants defense. A lot of defense will just come from artifacts, and it's just going to straight up come from having a high level character. Zhongli is also very similar. He scales off HP, or some of his kit scales off HP, so you don't really need to have the highest base attack weapons unless you want to go for the Bruiser build. And this is the exact same case for Albedo, which is why there is this argument that Harbinger of Dawn is the best weapon for Albedo. Now, personally, I would not invest into this weapon if you are limited on resources. I think it's a terrible, terrible idea because this weapon is not transferable to any other character as of now, unlike Festering Desire. This weapon is just going to be good flat out for basically forever. And I do think you should be tunneling or channeling all of your resources into this weapon right now. Because if you don't have Albedo, again, you can put it on other characters like Gene, Bennett, even the main traveler. Loads of different characters can really benefit from the Festering Desire. So let's take a look. Okay, guys. So Albedo, his elemental skill. Now, where do I even begin? Because there's like three layers and then there's even like four layers to this elemental skill. So the first one is, of course, the elevator boy. And then if we drop the elevator, boom, that's 4.6k damage. We go up. We can't go up because someone is standing on our elevator. Very rude of them. Let's go up here now. We can now elevate. Now you drop down and then boom, that's your extra bonus damage there, 6.824K. You can consistently go up the elevator up and down. So if I do this again, 6.824K again. And the reason why plunge attack is good is because AOE has higher scaling and of course it hits a lot of people at the same time. Now, with the second part of Albedo's elemental skill, all of the stuff I just showed you guys there, dropping the elevator, the plunge damage, all of that will scale off your attack and also geo damage, the initial elevator drop here, that's geo damage. 
that 2.4k is geo damage. Now, if everything else, or rather, if I do any damage within this radius, all of this damage here, boom, 6.824k there, will scale off his defense. So that's where this debate of, you know, do you want to go for Harbinger of Dawn or Festering Desire? Do you want to go for the four-star artifact build or do you want to go for the five-star artifact build really comes from? So if we are going to take a look at this, I'm going to try and run away. So you guys saw 6.82k damage there. Actually, if they are under 50%, they do take bonus damage. So let me hit them here one more time. Let's drop that boom 7.5k okay so 6.8k and 7.5k okay guys so we have returned to the fight scene and what we are going to do is switch our weapon to let's say so from this festering desire we're going to switch it to summit shaper now obviously summit shaper is going to give me a lot more tap boost we're on 1361 if we switch to the summit shaper we are going to have how much attack 1798 now the thing here guys is the attack stat is only going to affect ultimate damage and also the the initial drop of the elevator so if we drop the elevator here the elevator should do a bit more damage yet 2735 now the bonus damage we have lost 36 percent elemental skill damage from the festering desire so as you can see that 3k damage on the hit there which is Okay, if we can get a crit here, it should be less than 6.8k. So 5,842 damage. We lost 1,000 damage there by not having the Festering Desire. So if I go ahead and hit these guys again, 5.8k. When they are under 50% HP, the bonus damage that comes from the Elemental Skill is going to be increased 6.6k. So 6.6k is with the damage bonus from Albedo's Talent. So Albedo's Talent here, Calcite Might, Transient Blossoms generated by Abiogenesis Solar Isotope. It's a whole mouthful. Deal 25% more damage to opponents whose HP is below 50%, which is a very, very nice thing. But the thing here is that without the Festering Desire, the free-to-play weapon, guys, the damage is significantly less. So with the free-to-play weapon, the elemental skill does a lot more than this five-star weapon. So I do think this weapon is amazing. It's really, really, really good. If you're very, very confident that you're going to be playing Albedo a lot, and you're happy to level up a three-star weapon and keep it on Albedo for essentially ever, I think this is a great choice. Harbinger of Dawn. Okay, guys. Now, the next thing I want to show on Albedo is that he does not interfere with your elemental reactions. You know what? Let me switch to Dillick here. Please don't attack me. Please don't attack me. Please don't attack me. Okay. Let me switch to Dillick here. So, we have our boy Dillick. We'll put you on one key. We'll put you on two key. And we'll put Albedo on three key. So, oh. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm not good at dodging, apparently. So, we have Albedo's E. Hit him once. Right, now we use Chongyun's E. And as you can see, there's going to be a crystallized hit here, guys. So, if I, if I attack with, boom, you, you can still see the cryo is still on his head. So, that is Albedo not actually interrupting there. So, we're going to do this. We'll do this again. Boom. So, the Geo will remove everything. We're going to drop that again. So, the cryo is still on the head. So we can do melt very easily at the same time generating crystallized shields. So again, the pyro still remains on the head there. Very, very cool. Very, very cool indeed. And that's another free melt right there. So we'll drop the geo again. As you can see, the cryo is still on the head there. And you are able to freely, essentially, do your reactions while getting crystallized at the same time. Which I personally think is huge. Because... There are weapons in this game, guys. I'm sure some of you guys have been lucky or unlucky enough as my Dilluk gets very unlucky and dies. Right? I have no idea what's going on because my camera has kind of bugged out there. But that, that dude has just died. But there are weapons in the game. If you have been unlucky or lucky enough, depending on whether or not you wanted these weapons, that will increase your attack when you're protected by a shield. Now, these can be Crystallized Shields. They can be Diona Shields. They can be Xinyan Shield, Noel Shield, or Zhongli Shield. Any of them... Are okay, but these weapons, I'm going to call them the Geo weapons. We've got a spear, we're going to get a bow, we have the sword, we have the, the catalyst. All of these, if you have any of these crystallized shields or you have any of these reactions, you basically get the shield for free. You get the second proc of this ability here. While protected by a shield, this attack increase effect is increased by 100%. Albedo was specifically designed to cater to this. So his elemental skill will not invade or override or intrude any of your main reactions that you want to be doing. I know Diluc is dead, guys, and that's not the ideal scenario. But essentially, what I wanted to show you guys is you can do your melt or your vaporize abilities while having Albedo's shield 
build crystallizing every single time you do those reactions it's not going to make a difference so i think that is superb that is an ultimate ultimate support ability and to top it off guys and to top it off, Albedo has a very, very tasty talent here called Homuncular Nature. Using right of Progeniture, Tectonic Tide, his ultimate, increases the elemental mastery of nearby party members by 125. 125 is a lot of elemental mastery, and this will increase your elemental reactions, and most notably, increase the damage you do with Melt and Vaporize. So if you guys like Melt and Vaporize compositions, Albedo is going to fit in very, very nicely, because he's just going to give you that bonus shield, the bonus damage, which, again, at level 6, I'm hitting close to 8,000 with a free-to-play weapon, Constellation zero as well for albedo and i don't have a very very good defense build on albedo as for the artifacts guys i'm currently running archaic petra two piece with gladiators finale the only reason i'm running gladiators finale though guys is because of this helmet this helmet rolled very kindly for me energy recharge attack percent crit rate and crit damage as well as elemental mastery are very very good sub stats to have on a defense main stat piece for flowers and also feathers you are ideally looking for crit rate crit damage defense percent and energy recharge or alternatively instead of energy recharge elemental mastery or attack percent attack percent is good if you want your ultimate to do more damage attack percent is also good if you want your normal attacks to do more damage and also the first half of your elemental skill now the best sets that you can be running on albedo believe it or not is probably going to be a four star piece now the way i am gonna say this i hopefully phrase this correctly because your feather will only ever give you flat attack as your main stat and because your flower will always always give you flat hp as the main stat what you're looking for is a four star feather and flower from the defender set or the gambler set because their two piece set is a defense boost of plus 30 percent gambler gives 25 or 20 percent more elemental skill damage i personally think this one is better guardians is going to be better you are not going to be losing too much of these flat stats you might lose one extra roll or two extra rolls of your sub stats but i think that's worth the sacrifice for guaranteeing yourself a plus 30 percent boost to defense so if you do have a good flower which i don't attack hp attack hp attack defense and this is not bad see so for example if i had a good purple flower that had three substats already at level zero unfortunately this is only two if this rolled into for example crit rate and crit damage i would happily take this up to level 16 and i will replace this flower and same thing for the feather because albedo doesn't need too much attack unless you care about his ultimate doing damage then you should go for defenders and also the gamblers the only downside to this it's the exact same thing with the festering desire guys farming those sets unless they are part of a domain that you already are farming so the new hydro domain slash the new cryo domain actually has both defender and conveniently gambler in there so if you are farming that one do keep an eye out for defenders and gambler let me show you guys very quickly what domain i'm talking about so all the way in dragon spine over here if we take a look at this you can actually get defenders and both gamblers from this domain so do keep your eyes peeled for that because this is also technically farming for albedo as well you can also be farming for the crimson witch set to get yourself defenders but the main thing here guys is that this set is obviously not that transferable to other characters so just like the harbinger build if you don't want to spread your resources thin and you're very very stingy i want to make sure that you're able to easily recycle your weapons and your artifacts and don't go for the four star sets it's better just to go for archaic petra and also noblesse because noblesse can be used on virtually everyone archaic is basically essential to so many geo characters geo mc zhongli you've got ningguan as well so you do want to keep those in mind as well so if you do have the time you do have the resources or they just conveniently are the domains you are currently farming then by all means keep your eyes peeled for a good defender flower and a good defender feather ideally rolling crit rate crit damage and defense percent as the three main substats so that is something you want to keep in mind full noblesse is also not bad on albedo as well so full noblesse is not bad because you are going to use your ultimate and instantly switch to your main character that's going to do more damage so and they will also get 125 percent the 125 percent boost from 125 boost sorry in elemental mastery so yeah now actually i don't think i showed 
the ult damage so let's go quickly do that let's find some victims who can we attack here there should be some mobs here i just want to show you guys very quickly how the ultimate works make sure when you before you use your ultimate guys you have your elemental skill down on the ground because if your elemental skill is not down on the ground you are not going to get the exploding damage that you deserve to have with albedo so can we find some healy charles please there's one over there there's nothing over there okay so we got some healy charles over here how this is going to work is if you don't have your elemental skill down, it's just going to be one big explosion. If you have your elemental skill down, there's going to be an explosion around the flower in the middle here of Albedo's elemental skill. So as you can see there, it goes in a kind of random pattern, guys. I don't know if it's random or not or if it's always fixated in that pattern, but supposedly it's meant to take snapshots of where your opponents are. I don't think that's true. I think it is random or it is, it is in like a specific pattern of my hand motion, like a C, a reverse C shape. And it's going to do like uh, several explosions. I believe it's seven. It's either seven or nine explosions. It does not scale off your defense. If you want your ultimate to do more damage, you should be building geo damage and attack percent. So yeah, that's the ultimate. Make sure you use it wisely. Again, if you do have Harbinger of Dawn, it's also worth noting. If you want to play with the ultimate, you're leaving yourself exposed a little bit more to taking more hits. If you fall under 90% HP, that's a no bueno. Albedo really is your guy. And the other thing that Albedo can do, which is very, very nice. If I don't have footage here to show you guys live here, I will just insert some footage here. But he has a 10% chance of duplicating weapon ascension materials now weapon ascension materials as you guys know they cost resin to farm so what he's essentially doing with his passive is giving you a chance to save a lot of resin duplicating a single one of these is the same as giving me three blues back that is basically half a run that is essentially half a run when i say half a run it's 20 resin really and he's done it he's he's not done it he's not done it he's not done it but it's okay, because he's about to duplicate this gold right here. Exactly! Do you know how massive that is? Do you know how huge that is, guys? That is worth so much resin. Right there! So yeah, guys, that was a stream clip taken from www.twitch.tv forward slash Asian guy stream. But in that clip, he did actually duplicate the gold one. And he has numerously or multiple times for me now live on stream actually duplicated the gold one. Now, each gold that he duplicates is probably around 50 to 60, 70 ish resin. I'm going to say around 60 resin, depending on your RNG, but you can say it, it saves you around 60 resin. That's a lot of resin. And I think that in itself is very, very valuable. So Albedo, for me, Overall, very, very good character. I do think he is worth your primo gems, only though if you enjoy playing with him. You can, of course, by pressing F5, we're going to the test run area. Sorry, guys, I had to uh, kind of move everything back a little bit because, as you can see, my cat has decided no. I'm not allowed to have my desk space, but that's Josephine Joe stuff. But if you do go to a test run, you can actually test him out. And I would say the testing area here is absolutely okay. If you do feel he's clean, you feel he's smooth to play with and you enjoy it and you like the elevator mechanic, then by all means, go for it. Go for it. Because this banner, this banner is really, really, really good. Fischl is amazing. Fischl is going to be in the shop as well, so you don't need to go all the way to Constellation 6. If you get Constellation 5 Fischl on this banner, Fischl is going to be in the Star Glitter shop. Sucrose, I don't like her, but she's good, guys. I don't like her, but she's good. Bennett is amazing. Bennett is amazing. For Bennett, though, you might not want to go to Constellation 6 for Bennett because at Constellation 6, he does the same thing as Chongyun, and he will change your weapon, basically your normal attack damage or your physical damage, into pyro damage, which is not good for most people. So maybe you don't want Constellation 6 on Bennett. So there you guys have it. That is the very brief guide. I will have a much longer, much more in-depth guide, which will show you way more gameplay, but hopefully in general, that has been relatively helpful. So, so yeah, Happy New Year. I'm very tired, guys. It's already past midnight. I'm slow in my words. I'm going to say goodbye to you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And here's Jojo saying bye-bye. There you go. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Happy New Year. And let's hope we look forward to a very good 2021.